let's bring the meeting for June 8th to order. I'll do roll call first. Um, Steve Ball's not here. Phoebe Benzinger's not here. Jan Chastain. Chad Huffman is not here. Delphine Jetto. He's here. Richard Rogers. And I'm David Fishering, and I'm here. All right, so let's uh, approve the minutes from the last meeting. Do um, you guys have any concerns over the minutes? No? Okay, then I'll entertain yeah. a motion to approve them. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Do it. Jan has a second. All right, thanks, Jan. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, minutes are approved. All right, well, do we have uh, any additions or deletions? No, we do not. Okay, then let's get on with our one agenda item. Uh, I will share my screen here. If it will allow me to do so. There we go. All right, so thank you. Good evening, uh, Planning Commissioners. Good evening, members of the public. Uh, this is an application for a renewal of a preliminary plat. Uh, this is Waterfall Canyon amended preliminary plat number three. This property is located in western Montrose, uh, south of Spring Creek Road, and consists of the unbuilt portions of the Waterfall Canyon subdivision. The total acreage is approximately 118.83 acres and consists of 320 single family residential lots, as well as roads, tracts, and dedicated parkland. Uh, the property is located in both the R3 medium density district and the R3A medium high density district. It borders other properties within these same zoning designations as well as areas outside of city limits. And so this is a preliminary plat application. Uh, the original preliminary plat for the overall Waterfall Canyon subdivision was approved back in 2006. And as you know, part of the subdivision has been built and final platted. Uh, preliminary plats have an expiration date of five years, and this preliminary plat application will renew this process. So when reviewing subdivisions, uh, city staff and planning commission shall review that said subdivision is in conformance with the master plan and zoning regulations, review for the, excuse me, review for the relationship to topography, drainage, flooding, etc., availability of water, sewer, drainage, etc., uh, compatibility with natural features of the area, traffic and pedestrian flow, emergency services protection, and impacts on schools. Uh, as you know, we do reference our comprehensive plan for land use applications, which is a guiding but not legally binding document. Uh, the comprehensive plan shows general and somewhat flexible land use and density, but our municipal code specifies uh, the specific regulations regarding a certain property. According to our future land use map, this area is designated as residential mixed density medium. Uh, this district provides for a variety of residential types mixed within a neighborhood, including single family homes, townhomes, duplexes, and triplexes. The majority of the mixed density medium residential land uses are designated in areas that are not yet developed. Uh, as mentioned, this property is partially within R3 and R3A zoning districts. R3 provides an area suitable for single-family homes and duplexes, while R3A is suitable for both of these, as well as some multifamily. Uh, the proposed use is a use by right in both of these zoning districts. Finally, here is the plat itself. Uh, this first page is mostly just the notes and signature lines. Uh, page two, uh, more notes, uh, as well as some of the uh, line data. Uh, I know the text is quite small, but this is also in tonight's packet. So page three shows the actual lots to be created. Uh, this is the northern portion of this preliminary plat, which is next to the existing subdivision. And then this is just to the south. Uh, the rest of the lots being created here, uh, also note the park right in the middle of the subdivision that's being dedicated to the city of Montrose. Uh, then here's just a zoomed out view showing the subdivision overall. Uh, as mentioned, this subdivision is proposing 320 overall lots which is to be built in five phases. So in conclusion, staff finds that the preliminary plat is in compliance with subdivision regulations and the comprehensive plan. Uh, this proposal meets the intent of the zoning district. Staff recommends approval of the Waterfall Canyon amended preliminary plat number three with the standard condition that's placed on our preliminary plats. 
Um, and with that, uh, I would ask the applicant to uh, step forward. Here for questions. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for the applicant or for staff? Nope. Okay. No. Advocates for more greens and more trees, um, but I think, you know, in this case, we're used by right. The average lot is what, 6,500, 7,500? Approximately that, yeah. Yes, that's what I, okay, thank you, that's all. I'm Matt Miles, 1282 West Oak Grove Road, neighbor to the project. Um, the minimum lot size in R3A, I think, is 6250. The reason we put those two little cul-de-sacs in there, which I think is the only plan from the change from the original, is we're trying to um, duplexes are allowed by as a use by right, and we didn't want any duplexes in there, so we put the cul-de-sacs in to make some smaller lots for single family. That was the intent of what we're doing. So I don't know what the smallest lot actually is, but the smallest lot I think is 6,200 or 6,250 in that zoning. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Are there any questions? No. All right. Sharon, just make a note that Steve is here. Okay. Anything else, guys, for staff or no? Okay. Uh, in that case, we'll open up the uh, public comment portion of this agenda item. So if there's anybody uh, sitting out there that would like to come up and have questions or concerns, now's the time. Uh, just, state, just come up and state your name and your address, please. Um, and just please make sure that all your comments are directed to us here at, at, on the commission, and we will ask questions of staff or the applicant if we need to. Okay. My name is Susan Kroll. And my address is 1403 Blue Lake Drive in the existing Waterfall Canyon subdivision. And this is awkward because Matt is a longtime friend of mine, but I'm here in opposition <laughs> to what he has planned. Uh, I have several concerns. One is that Matt is talking about expanding farther than he currently has developed. And those of us who have lived there for a period of time, and I only moved in in 2015, are still waiting for some of the improvements that were promised initially, which includes walking trails, common areas, and such. Our current common areas consist of the limited amount of space in front of mailboxes, which are dangerous places to stand in the winter anyway because they're iced over, and if you're mobility limited as I am, I've helped pick a couple of older people than I am up from in front of the mailboxes. So that's a question for me. We also having been for many years on the uh, architectural approval committee and landscaping committee have an issue with trees that were gifted to us by matt but now they are ours to maintain and it's getting increasingly expensive for us to water these trees i have a question as far as what kinds of trees or other vegetation would be included in the landscaping in other deeded property i guess you would call it or gifted property as Matt has developed, we have gotten small segments of land that were not commercially developable, developable, if that's a word, for him, given to us, but they came to us not landscaped. To even just put gravel over them, which would not be a very aesthetic uh, approach, is more money than the Homeowners Association has available to deal with this issue. If he continues with this development and we get deeded more land, I don't know how we can possibly landscape it to make the community continue to look um, as attractive as it was when I first moved there. I have some concerns. Uh, Matt has already said that they put the cul-de-sacs in so that they wouldn't have duplexes. I know that the uh, other designation would say that there could be apartment buildings. He has just kind of assured me that that probably won't happen. He's doing that elsewhere. But uh, we already have two duplex units in the community, and they themselves, in terms of traffic on our streets, have been a little bit of an issue. I'm extremely concerned, as I looked at the proposed development, about the issue of egress from the subdivision. 
we have a lot of concentrated housing right now and we'll have even more so if this development goes through now previously I appeared at a council meeting unfortunately you'd already made up your minds or the council had already made up their minds I was not aware of the planning session and would have attended that had it been possible but land that would have fed from 6375 Road and in on the subdivision south of Blue Lake Drive on to Orchard was deeded over to Matt and is not available now as an egress we have very limited I mean right now the way in and out of there is a everybody has to go to Blue Lake Drive and out it's quite congested at some times when people are going to work not everybody there like me is retired you know and Susan, there's sorry your three minutes are up if you want to finish any other if you have a list of other issues if you want. yes I do yep. I asked earlier if I was gonna be limited to three minutes and I was told I was not going to be <laughs> okay if, all right if you just got a list of them just let them put well them. I'm concerned about the egress especially especially with fire concerns and so on since we had a hillside fire there a year ago and a final question I have just met Jan for any further development is where is all the water coming from for the water taps for these houses and all the other developments that are being approved because we are encouraging if possible that people do responsible by code zero escaping but this many more houses I just have to wonder and all the other developments being approved in the county in the city where's the water coming from to supply these homes all right thanks okay. thank you thank you Susan all right is there anybody else out there you folks did you want to come up and say anything you sure okay all right in that case we will close the public comment portion um, I've Matt, if you want to jump up there I guess if you'd like to address any of those you can if not we might have some questions for you well real quick going backward the water supply when we originally built um, Waterfall Canyon the city required us to run a water main from Poorhouse Liquors up Highway 90 clear through the project out Orchard Road and up on to the top of the hogback where the new water tank is to create uh, circuitous uh, water so that's all been addressed uh, from a safety standpoint with the streets we have um, a hard surface I should say an all-weather uh, road coming in from West Oak Grove Road it's not paved but it's gravel it's private but it's a safety um, access and then we do have a couple of back ways out of the subdivision that are are graveled for interim safety we do plan in conjunction with the completion of the phase that we're working on right now which is actually part of tonight's approval tying extending 6375 road and tying in um, another subdivision street so there will be actually two streets coming out of the subdivision onto the minor arterial which is 6375 road and that all jives with uh, the traffic study that we we submitted to the city and then when it comes to common spaces what I think you're referring to Sue is the um, grass underneath the power lines no, I was referring to whatever areas might have been, like green areas where people could picnic or make sure you just address us please sorry <laughs> sorry Susan so sorry about that but um, it is our intention to gosh I don't even know how to say this without sounding like I'm trying to be slippery but whatever the code requires we planted a ton of trees out there and I didn't know that there was a issue with um, expense keeping them watered but that's you know we conveyed that stuff to the HOA there is a strip of um, unimproved natural grass weeds rocks whatever you want to call it underneath the power lines which is the uh, WAPA easement and then the city is going to the the park that's in the middle of the phase we're working on right now the city is actually going to do the improvements inside that park so we're going to build the streets around the perimeter and then the city is going to um, take it from there and it'll be public open space and was I don't remember another question 
<clears throat> I do. So when you purchase this property, and I think we talked about it for another subdivision as well, irrigation rights come with that most of the time. Is there a way we can al allocate some irrigation rights so as we plant trees, we have enough irrigation water to take care of those without having to use city water? It costs multiple times more to water with a pump station and irrigation water than it costs to water with city water. Initially or over time? What's that? Initially or over time? Over that time. More. Because you have continual maintenance on the, on pump. the pump station. And uh, the irrigation for the trees, and there may be some grass in there someplace, but um, it's all cobble and trees, and the trees are drip irrigated, so it's a pretty minimal system. Now, I, would, I guess chiming on that a little bit. So, for large, large swaths of grass, like soccer fields, turf fields, that's where irrigation is definitely cheaper um, in the in the long run. Drip systems, we almost exclusively see people put those on city water because a lot of times irrigation water is just dirty enough that it it plugs up the drips, um, uh, and they're small enough scale that it's just easier to not have the maintenance. So Makes sense. That matches what we typically see. Makes sense. Awesome. Thank you. I did want to mention for public information, um, I heard a comment on the council already had made a decision. Um, I think it's important to understand the process. They, they come b before us, but there is also such a thing as use by right by zoning. So we're also limited on certain things we can and can do. So I'd like the public to know that because if we feel or can seem like we've made up our mind, it's also because our hands may be tied because it's a use by right by Matt. It's his zoning, it's his property, and it's his use by right. There is very little we can change. We can always make suggestions to Mr. Miles, and he's always very open to discuss them with you, with us, um, but we can't make him do any, make any changes if it's his use by right. So I just wanted to make that clear to the public as well. I do have a question, and maybe a Maybe some of the finer points. I'm sure you're within the codes of the, the R3A. But I think, uh, this is, is this the same HOA, by the way? It's all one HOA? Do you know? Are you probably are, are you involved with the HOA for the, do you know if it will be the same HOA for the north section as it is for the? It, at a high level, I'm involved in the HOA. Ultimately, it will be I, one HOA on the entire property. Okay. That's what I thought. Is there any way that you can meet with the HOA members and work out some of these, some of these pretty, uh, Obvious differences. I realize that that's a little bit Jen, of a, I, a fringe I, benefit. I bend over backward. I offer, and once again, you know, I, it's hard for me to stand here and say this with a straight face because if I was out in the audience, I'd be like, "Yeah, right." But I offer to pay for things. I offered them five thousand dollars to zero scape or do whatever they wanted to do under the power lines. So I, I do communicate. That said, communication is imperfect, and that's why. You know, Sue is here with some concerns. I but guess I, I, I do. I do my best. Okay. I guess I'm suggesting above and beyond the use by right, which you have mentioned, is that there be some either you're involved at the HOA meeting or something above and beyond what I hear you attempting to do with the, the North community, the North development. It's just a suggestion. I guess it's the only way we can do it. Is a, I'm doing is a suggestion. So but that's kind of all I have to say about it. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. Uh, anybody else got a question for Matt? Nope. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, uh, Scott or Will William. Actually, could you could you bring up the uh, the plat real quick? And Scott, can you talk a little bit about because um, I've you know I've got some friends that live in there. I've driven in there before. Um, and yeah, when if that other addition is fully built out, having that one egress does seem a little a little lacking. But you know, uh, don't know what the traffic study said. But also, what are the what are the uh, city regulations on? Like, at what point do you need to have another ingress egress? Yeah, that's a great question, and we have yeah spent quite a bit of time on that. So I think the initial setup. Um, 6375 road, you know, it, it obviously connects at the northern end to um, Highway 90 there. Long term, it's intended to go down to West Oak Grove Road, but 
Um, there's only a portion of the right-of-way that's been dedicated for that, enough for an emergency egress road, but not enough to construct a you know, true road. Um, and then in the original conception of the subdivision back in the early 2000s, they did have a connection out to Orchard Road. Um, so with this filing, we've asked them, so as part of the filings, they do have a phasing plan, you'll see in the preliminary plat there. Um, we kind of went back and forth a couple times on when to get that additional uh, connection made. And so I think you can see there, I can't remember how it's labeled, but it's, it's I think upon the completion of this next phase, there are then about 300 lots accessed off of a single access point, which we don't have anything formal in the code, but talking through with the fire department and EMS, that kind of seemed to be their trigger, and they were in agreement that that was an appropriate time to ask them to finish, or go down 6375 Road down to the next connection point. So you can at least get two onto 6375 Road. Um, you know, your bottleneck is still uh, Main Street, or Highway 90 up at the top. Um, obviously, most are turning right in a, an emergency situation, especially, you, you know, do what you can to get out. And uh, the traffic modeling says that, you know, the, your queue times aren't, um, outside of standards for those kind of situations. The fire department is fully comfortable in their ability to fight um, a fire and that, um, you know, we do have full fire protection in here. That's another thing they have to model and verify and, and reasons for, you know, the piping network that was put in initially and then, you know, further bolstered by our new tank um, to give that system resiliency. But um, the fire department is fully comfortable that they can stay ahead of anything that would come their way um, under these configurations. Um, the Orchard Road connection, uh, it was kind of a really sensitive thing. We, you know, obviously word got out that that was going to connect there. It's a county road, county, you know, kind of historic stuff, um, not built for any kind of city type traffic. So we're kind of in a weird, you know, urban rural interface issue where, you know, we don't have control over that road. We don't have control over that. And we didn't want to alienate and upset a lot of people that aren't even within our jurisdiction. And so that's what's driven the decision to focus on, um, you know, getting the two connections here and then having the emergency connection down to East Oak Grove, which was also requested, I think, by the fire department. Um, that was put in like two filings ago, if I remember right, something to that effect. But, um, you know, with that, the people that are tasked with responding to these things are comfortable and, and we have kind of gone several iterations to get to that point. Okay. And that is on there. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that on the, I mean, it's hard to see here, but um, that it's actually a note on the plat that when it hits that 300 unit, that like it triggers that that construction yeah yep and then uh, another kind of speaking of phasing to bring up some of the recreation trails so they do have um the recreation trail along happy canyon creek we asked them to fold that into the phasing plan so that was clear and i think they have a couple of small interior ones in some of the common areas between back-to-back -back lots where some of the drainage is passing through that are built with with those phasing to make sure that those that it's very clear that those get brought online with each phase i guess fair statement steve Thank you. Do you have any other questions for staff? No? It, All right. Maybe one more thing I'll hit on too with regards to water. So, you know, Matt's kind of hit on water capacity is get as far as getting water out there, fire protection, things of that sort. There's also a water quantity um, thing with the, the drought. Um, I'll say our water resources. We do have a, if you go to City of Montrose, just type in City of Montrose Water Conservation. Um, we have some videos on there at the bottom of that page um, that kind of speak to our water resource situation. Um, we're, our, you know, predecessors set us up very well so we you know overall have about 1300 acre feet of water resources that are relatively secure um, available to the city and um, we're using about four um, so we do have a lot of room to grow um, but it's never uh, time to let our guard down given everything that's going on with the Colorado system and their drought we actually got it out today um, we're starting a comprehensive water resource master plan um, to start looking at codes related to uh, water conservation um, you know we've never gone down that road because it's you know it's, it's slippery slope to force when we have so much water rights and water resources available to force such things but we're starting to look at that because the culture is changing around water which is great um, we want to be conservation as a city we want to be good stewards of it but we also want our policies to be um, good stewards of the resource so um, that is definitely in the works um, more than it's ever been and, and we're taking a very comprehensive look at that. How does that work together with Project 7? Um, so Project 7, they're the you know, treatment provider. Um, their, uh, their satellite treatment plant will run off of that uh, collectively with all the people that have um, municipal water pools out of uh, the Ridgeway rights. Um, they will 
instead of they'll just do less exchange water so right now um, our rights are in Ridgeway but we get our water out of the um, Blue Mesa um, down through the Gunnison Tunnel um, when the satellite uh, the, or the second treatment plant comes online they will use some of that Ridgeway water um, and then the transfer to the switch between Ridgeway water with the water users and the city will just be less um, be that amount less whatever they treat at written directly out of Ridgeway if that makes sense thank you yep. Thanks, Scott. Uh, in that case, guys, um, if there's no other discussion, then I would uh, entertain a motion. Well, yeah, if you want to discuss more, we can. Yeah, yeah go for it. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, well, we go for it. Public, right? yep. I have a question. Well, unfortunately, I have a computer that's not working. I have to talk IT about it. So I'm not clear. Is this going to be a change from IT to IT yet? No, we're not changing the zoning. No, yeah, no, we're not, it's not, uh, not changing the zoning. It's not a change in the zoning. It's our new zoning. Gotcha. Thank you. This is this design. Right. Thank you. Yes. I hereby make a motion to recommend to City Council approval of the preliminary plat application with the following condition. The approval of this pre preliminary plat is expressly conditioned upon City staff ensuring that all policies, regulation, ordinance, and municipal codes provision are met and that the applicant adequate ad adequately addresses all the staff's concern prior to the execution of the final plat. The city staff is not authorized by this approval to execute the final plat prior to all conditions being satisfied. The request meets the code criteria based on the evidence and testimony presented at this hearing and in the staff report. All right. Do I have a second? second. All right. Thanks, Richard. Uh, any discussion? No? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Steve, are you abstaining? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a preliminary plat, but if you don't feel like you got enough of it, then yeah, okay. you can abstain. Yeah, you can abstain. Yeah, abstain. Okay. All right. Well, the motion passes. Uh, what, three to three to one. Or no, sorry, three to. You abstained. Yeah, three to two. Two abstentions. Th three approvals. All right. Thank you. Um, the three is not going to be a quorum. So, yes, yes. So, Steve, if if you if you feel it's it's it, it's if you feel like there's going to be an issue with someone saying that you weren't here, like didn't understand the, what we were talking about. Um, and this, it, you know, if it was if it was a zoning thing or something, I'd say maybe, but it's a plat, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, do we need to take the vote again? Or? Yep. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Uh, with the same motion on, on, on the table, uh, you have to retake the vote. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Jan, are you abstaining? Okay. So motion passes with four in the approval and one abstention. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> this is why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they needed me today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, what do we got? Um, next meeting or other business William what do we got uh, no other business uh, next meeting will be June 22nd we do have agenda items for that night
Yeah, it's a very deep question. We could talk about it for hours. So I'll try and get it down to two minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I manage the city's water resources. Uh, definitely front and center on everybody's mind. Um, it's important to remember scale. So, you know, as a city, we use 5,000 acre feet. This valley diverts a million acre feet. Yeah, that's less than 1%. Um, you know, the a lot of the, you know, so it's an acre of subdivision uses less than an acre of, um, uh, agriculture. Of, ag of agriculture. And not to say they're not all important. Everybody, cities, agriculture, I mean, the cut, the, the not the cuts, but the, challenges that are coming are going to be universal and cities have to do their part agriculture is going to do their part everybody needs to do their part and you know the way out of it's going to be conservation um so a lot of the subdivisions we've been looking at recently are small lot subdivisions and culturally a lot um are doing the, the culture is changing naturally a lot of people are doing a lot you don't see a lot of fence to fence green turf um, first, because it's really expensive, so there's that natural driver to do that, um, to not do that. Um, but people understand that we live in a desert and want to be good stewards of it. Um, so we, I mean, the, there isn't a huge problem in the, a lot of these subdivisions we're approving now. If you drive, you start getting on the outskirts of town where these people have agricultural lots, two to three acres, one house, and it's Bermuda blue the entire thing, that's wasteful. I mean, that's, uh, and hopefully that cultural change, we have no control over those. Those are county you know, subdivisions and stuff um, where a lot of that happens. There are some large estate subdivisions in town where that's happening and that's what we kind of aim to try and rein in a little bit um, with, you know, so, you know, the, the fixes on those are mandatory, um, you know, water leakage uh, enforcement where people are wiring their street, we go and write them a ticket uh, or mandatory maximum turf sizes, mandatory restrictions on non-essential turf. And those are the kind of things that we're trying to get ironed out with this um, study we're doing, which will include um, open houses, public input, because we want to gauge the community's culture and what they want. Um, we live in a very conservative community that does not want the government telling them what size their yard can be. Um, and so we need to get past that um, if we're going to do those kind of things and, and figure out a way to manage this that works within the culture and desires of our community. Um, and th that's what we're working on. That's, and that's something we, we don't just go swing a hammer and say you can't have a yard. Um, you know, that's something that'll take a long time and a lot of community input to get through. Um, and I don't know what that's gonna look like, but we're, we're working on it. Well, and I think maybe what Jen was trying to say too is how can we help educate people on what to do? And maybe it's just, you know, there is some kind of grass that you never have to cut or that you water less or, you know, here are solutions or maybe even an open house to say, learn about how to have a zero skateboard. You know what I mean? Maybe education, because I think Jen is right in the sense that a lot of people want to be part of the solution, but they don't know how. Yes, yeah, so if you go to our, again, Google City Montrose Water Conservation, we have some links to resources for that. So the, um, you know, conservation office type stuff, botanic gardens, um, some of these resources that can help online videos. It's really easy to Google water wise landscaping. I and mean, that's how I did my yard. Um, went on YouTube. Yeah, you know, we know that. If people want to learn, they can, I they know. can learn it at I the know. end of the day. <laughs> um, you know, what's government's role at this stage and how intrusive do we want to be? Um, and that's, again, that's kind of what we're working on. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Th there are a number of, of city lots that are large, like one of, the, one of the new subdivisions that just went in south of town. Those are like acre, acre and a half, and those can... They're like three acres, the, yeah. yeah. And they yeah, can, that falls they can, Valley they Ranch can south. put bluegrass in that whole thing, can't they? They have irrigation water, um, okay. so, that but, but even that's a problem, right? So the, the drought isn't unique to municipal water. It isn't unique to, to irrigation water. Um, you know, I'm talking raw, untreated water when I say irrigation water. Um, uh, they all need to be doing their part. I, I, mean, I, I personally think to have a three acre lot and cover it in grass is absolutely irresponsible, but that's just my personal opinion you know if someone wants to do that and they have the irrigation water to do it at this stage it's we don't we're not we're not intervening with that okay so and it's not our jurisdiction to intervene the with planning that planning commission has absolutely no involvement in that nor does the city correct not yet not yet yeah okay. so i mean i'm not to say we couldn't if it becomes city code then yeah so i mean we, we could <laughs> so i mean in good examples so like vegas you know they no front so like if you were to build a residence in las vegas you have pretty serious impact fees related to water in the tens of thousands um zero um zero front yard turf and 
no more than 50% of your backyard as turf. Um, and they're one of the most more progressive, um, and, and now they have a state law for no non-essential turf. Um, and they're one of the more kind of leading edge, um, you know, regular agencies that are dealing with this. Um, they've been successful in it. Um, a lot of reclaimed water, their usage hasn't gone up in 30 years um, or 20 years. So, um, yeah, it's those are all things we're working on. Those are very deep, complex questions that that have a lot of layers to them. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. And I, I love talking water. So if anybody wants to talk water, it's, it's like the favorite thing I do. So. All right, uh, William, you got anything else? No. Nope. Uh, you guys have anything else? No. Nope. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. J Jan, Richard. They jinxed each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Richard seconded. Richard. Uh, all right. All those in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Nobody's opposed. Slim. <laughs>